So we're back again doing some more of the wiring. Um, I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, you'll probably see a little bit of what you saw at the end of the last video, but then we'll be moving on to the next components to be installed. Just going to run through where we've got to so far. Which I think this is a bit of a repeat. Here are our, this is our MIDI distribution, and each of these feeds is going out to a uh, local distribution box around the van. It's important when you're doing these crimp connectors, one, cover up as much metal as possible without compromising the contact between the crimp terminal and whatever you're bolting it into. So I've got heat shrink on all of them. Also, make sure you use the appropriate size crimp for both the terminal size and for your cable size. So down here we've got all sorts of different sizes to suit the different terminals. So for example, this here you this here uses five mil terminals. Um, what we have is a 10-5 terminal. So it takes a 10 mil cable and has a five mil hole in it. This one takes sixes, so that was 10-6. This is 8s, so this would be a 10-8, except that's not going to be a 10, it's going to be a different size going off up there. So, it's important, you can't just buy a generic box of cable crimps, you need to make sure you size the cable crimps to suit the terminals you're using and the cable sizes. So to make up these, put these terminals on, we're using a hydraulic crimp tool uh, with an appropriately sized die to crush for the cable. It's slightly awkward to use because you need to be able to hold the um, crimp onto the cable, at least to begin with. So, there we are. Hopefully you can see that. And then you just crimp till this is shut. Personally, I think this is a better option than those hammer crimpers. And to be honest, the price was about the same. This tool was only maybe 25 or £30. Pounds. And it'll do cables up to 70 square millimetres. Okay, so we always test them. And it's a good job we did because that hadn't crimped it tight enough. I have found on occasion this um, crimp tool hasn't quite crimped all the way down. And all I'll do is change the dies out for the next size down. And then that should really grip in and... Um, crimp it properly but always do a pull test like that because if it fails far better to fall apart there could pull it back together crimp, crimp it again so as per the last time just trying to keep it all nicely together until it grips and then just crimping it down until the jaws come together So, uh, looking better. Pull test, this time that passes. So, that's a good crimp. Now to do the other end. So, there we have the fully crimped cable. And now I'm going to put some heat shrink over the ends. Again, to cover up all of this exposed metal. So that only this section is uh, left exposed. So that it can be attached to the terminals. Now, because I've got to do both ends and that's very hot, I've got to wait for this end to cool down before I can grab it to then do this end up. And here we have the finished cable. This is very similar to if you were making battery cables for paralleling cables. Similar sort of thing, nice short cable. Good solid crimp connections and then covering the ends, the exposed ends with heat shrink. So that's the main 300 amp breaker that will separate the cut the battery off installed with its little lead up onto our maxi distribution board um, I realize this negative looks like it's close but there's actually 
depth between the two so this will be able to stay well clear and shouldn't get in the way of operating that. If it does I will change the position of either this breaker or the direction that the um, feed back to the battery goes. So here we've got one of the uh, feed cables for the inverter and as you can see we have added a ferrule to the end and this is really important whenever you're using um, multi-cord wire use ferrules because it's it means that you're keeping all of the conductors next to each other none of them are getting loose none of them are going to be afraid and your screw terminals will hold on to these much much better so because the uh, overall length from the fuse box to the inverter is going to be way under a meter this 35 millimeter cable is going to be suitable for this application uh, in the installation manual for the inverter if this was between one and a half or four and a half meters then you'd need to go up to 50 mil cable but as I said this is such a short cable run from here to here it's probably half a meter then the 35 is going to be adequate so another little bit more progress uh, we've got the main breaker in can't remember if that's already in one then we've got the feed out from the maxi fuse box through the battery protect to the midi fuse box so this is our way of controlling the loads in a low voltage low temperature or high temperature cutoff situation with the lithium battery the other load is the inverter which is controlled on its own um, separate control wire now that's basically all of this bottom end is now done tied it up a little bit use some P clips just to tidy everything up this here is the ground for the battery protect so it can get power now I need to wire up the charging section here so we've got to have the solar panels in solar panels out battery uh, van battery that's this cable here into the Orion TR smart and then out and through the breakers there and then back into the connecting to the maxi distribution there uh, that cable is fused at the other end as well so I'm just trying to methodically work my way through this and the next stage is to sort out the breaker box for the charging sources so the reason I've gone with a breaker box is just because we need a number of um, reasonably high ampage DC breakers and this was a cost effective way of doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the solar panels coming into this. This is mainly just so we can easily turn them on and off. And then it's going to loop round the back and out and up to the MPPT. Then the MPPT will send the positive back down into this breaker here so that means that the source from the MPPT is then protected and that will go out and into our battery protect and then we've got the uh, DC to DC charger battery cables will go into that which are fused at the other end next to the vehicle battery and then out of the DC to DC in through here and into this breaker again loop round out and into the battery protect. So here we are this is all of the main components wired in I have attached everything with um, p-clips probably just add a couple more zip ties just to tidy things up a little bit better trim all the tails off put the cover on this and then move on to the next bit okay so here's the uh, installed electrical system or at least the main distribution part the only thing missing at the minute is the battery which is going to go just down there but I need to make up the battery cables and screw it down to the floor so I will run you through this setup so in here we've got the 240 volts going into the inverter charger so the Victron MultiPlus um, handles the switching between shore power and inverted 
power and also charging of the battery automatically. So the power goes into there first, comes out of there and goes into our 240 volt consumer unit. And then this has, I think we've got it set with three circuits, doesn't necessarily need them, but that's what's in it. So it's got one for the front, one for the kitchen, and then another one for the rear, which supplies, will supply a socket in the garage and a socket in the rear. The inverter is then connected to this Lynx power in, which is our maxi distribution. So this is holding all the really big fuses, 100 amp, 200 amp fuses. Also connect, this is basically two bus bars. So connecting to that, we've got our charging sources. So we've got our uh, MPPT charger and our Orion battery to battery charger. The solar panels come in through this uh, box with an isolator for the panels themselves up to the MPPT then the positive from that goes back through a breaker and then onto the maxi uh, sorry onto the battery protect which then goes back into the maxi distribution the battery to battery comes in from the van battery which is fused at the other end and then out into here the positive is into here through a breaker back out into the battery protect and then onto the maxi. Then at the bottom we've got the uh, MIDI distribution and so this is to serve all the local distribution boxes and they're all going through a, another battery protect. These two battery protects are going to be controlled by the relays on the battery BMS so that if we have low voltage, low temperature over voltage, high temperature, we can turn off our different charging or loads. Then we've got a negative bus bar for the kind of matches up with the MIDI distribution, plus it also, and then this is connected to the maxi. There's also just the two battery protects needed a negative post um, just so that they, they can draw power themselves. Then right at the bottom we've got a 300 amp breaker which is going to be our main battery isolator. So we've got the uh, everything hooked up now, I'm just doing the battery. So breaker is open, just hooked up the negative there. The positive is going to be bolted up on top when it's all in place. I need to put the cover on this before we do that as well. Uh, I've made sure all of my circuit breakers are off all of my AC is off and that the inverter is turned off. So yesterday I didn't actually get the uh, camera out to do much filming but I've put in all of the local distribution points so as well as mounting some plywood to the metal frame to actually fit them on. So this is our kitchen, kitchen distribution board and it's got a 12 to 24 volt converter which is going to um, power all of our Philips Hue light strips which run on 24 volts so that's all of them which will need cutting and crimping and then attaching to the fuse box and that's the kitchen unit I still will need to wire up for the fridge and some sockets but I haven't got that opposite the kitchen um, unit we've got the front distribution unit so this has got Max air fan, shower light, shower fan, the exterior lights will come off this fuse board, the front sockets that are down below will also come off this fuse board, um, and I think we're going to put some lights inside these covers, again that will come off this fuse board here. Then moving to the back inside the um, kind of bedroom shelf unit, this has got another one here, and this is going to have the rear max fan, the reading lights which are above our heads on the bed and then some uh, 12 volt sockets which will be inside this cupboard, I'm going to have to move this bar, it's too low now, but this cat cupboard here or shelf is going to be tall enough that we could put um, laptops, iPads, things like that could be stored in there and charged and the 240 volt socket will go inside there. And then finally we're on into the garage and there's a distribution board back here 
and in the garage uh, there'll be some sockets off that the two water pumps in fact three water pumps because there's the circulation pump for the hot water the compressor all of that's going to come off this so with the um, power supply sorted ready for the Philips Hue light strips I can now uh, modify the light strips so that they run off the 12, 24 volt system in the van rather than the 230 volt plug that they come with. Normally I'd just buy new connectors and solder the new connectors onto the cable which I already had in the ceiling but um, this particular connector seems to be very very hard to come by and I can't actually find it so the cheapest solution since I've already got them because I came with them is to just chop the ends off the leads then I'll solder them together I've just got some heat shrink uh, which I need to shrink down then I've got some heat shrink to cover these up and to uh, support these joints now we've got the finished joint now this this bit of cable really is probably a bit long but until I've got the ceiling up um, these strips aren't in their final position I'd rather have slightly too much cable than not enough and it's easy enough just to tuck this up inside the um, ceiling liner um, or if I want I'll just chop that connection out and shrink the cable right down when I know how long it needs to be so now I'm just going to uh, connect it all up pop a fuse in make sure it all works so I've got um, three sets of Philip Hue light strips up and running now we've got one at the back, one for the front, one for the kitchen. The only one that's actually in the finished position is the kitchen one. The ones at the back and the front will be redone once I've put the roof in, at uh, the ceiling. These are all currently working just via the Bluetooth inbuilt, but now that I've got a working uh, electrical system with Wi-Fi network and all of that good stuff hidden down there, I'm going to put in the Hue Hub. So we've got the um, Victron Pi up and running, which is a really good um, kind of system monitor. Everything's on, the inverter's on. We've got the Philips Hue Bridge, I'll come back to this, that in a second. Going through the um, fuse box. We've got the remote for the lights. Something I don't think I'd realised is that the Philips Hue bridge needs a, a hard connection to the router. Unfortunately, my fuse box, where I'm getting the power for it, is up here, and the router's down there. I don't particularly want to run a cable visibly down there, because everything else is internal. So I need to have a look and a think. As silly as it sounds, I don't actually have a small fuse box down here. Anyway, that's all for another day. I've kind of run out of time this weekend. It's a bit of a shame, but at the minute, all the wiring for the um, Victron monitor, because this is all, it takes um, USB leads from each of the different chargers and sources. And because of that, it's a bit messy. In fact, there's a network cable that has to come off the inverter. Until I know exactly where I'm putting this, I don't want to kind of attach all these cables to anything because I'll, I'll just have to take them off again. Um, I'll probably zip time up out, out of the way, or I might just unplug that for now. It, it doesn't, the system works without it, it's just a handy monitor. Um, but yeah, so everything else is looking fairly tidy, and then as soon as you start throwing all these USB leads in, it gets really messy. So I'm going to um, work on that and get it all tidied up. Again, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. As you can see, we've just been plodding through, making some progress. There's still lots of bits and pieces of the wiring to do, um, but I'm happy so far. I wish the weather had been better and I could have got the solar panels on, but it was just horrific out there, so it can wait for another week. Thanks for watching. Please do comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Cheers.